All right. So we are going to be talking about Manifest Destiny and how that affected the Mexican-American War. Okay. So while the Louisiana Purchase had doubled the size of the United States, the country was actually a lot smaller in 1845 than it is today. So we had Canada to the north. Our western border was the Rocky Mountains. Mexico was to the southwest, and the Gulf of Mexico was to the south. And so we see that Mexico was actually a lot larger than it is today. It included Texas, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, uh, California, and Colorado. So pretty much all of the west, all that you see in green in this picture is what should be Mexico, rightfully so, should be Mexico. But then uh, Texas, being Texas, had broken away from Mexico in 1836, and by 1845 had officially joined the United States. So we start to see that chipping away of Mexico. Um, and, you know, in typical American fashion, many influential elites and politicians believed that we should grow and expand further west that we had a duty or a right. And one of the most notable expansionists was this guy on the bottom, uh, President James K. Polk. And so in fact, Polk, when he was elected president, he had four main goals that he said he wanted to accomplish in his one and only term as president. He said he wanted to be there for four, he wanted to accomplish four things and then go home. Uh, so he said he wanted to lower the tariffs, which we, we know is taxes. Uh, set up a treasury bank, so set up a national treasury, acquire Oregon from Canada, so up in the north, and then finally he wanted to add California and New Mexico from Mexico by any means necessary. There was just one thing that Polk didn't really take into consideration or didn't really care to take into consideration, and that is the fact that hundreds of thousands of Native Americans still lived on these lands out to the West. And so partly inspired by Polk's statement, in 1845, this newspaper editor named John O'Sullivan claimed he knew <laughs> God's plan for the land. And so he said that it was the United States' manifest destiny to take and, in his words, develop the rest of, the, of North America. And so he claimed that God meant for the white race to, his words, air quote, civilize this land by any means necessary and despite whomever may be in the way. So regardless of what stands in the way or who, he said it was the United States right to take that land. You know, there was also this whole giant discovery of gold in California that could have inspired this push out west. But, you know, I guess that was all in God's plan, too. You know, maybe. So to begin uh, getting this land, Polk needed a reason or justification since it, uh, this land out west was part of Mexico. And so Polk ordered future president General Zachary Taylor to move to the Rio Grande River, which was the border, uh, which was past the border of the United States and Mexico. So this technically was an invasion of Mexico since, like I mentioned, it was past that agreed-upon border. Polk, he knew that that was technically an invasion, but he was hoping to provoke Mexico into being the first to shoot so that he could justify going to war because it makes it seem like we're the victim then. And so a few months later, Polk got his wish when a group of U.S. troops were killed by Mexican fighters. So... Mexico technically fired the first shot, but the U.S. got exactly what it wanted with an excuse to go to war. So, after hearing of the attack, Congress quickly decided to declare war. And so, with there was an overwhelming majority that supported the war, a handful of congressmen like Joshua Giddings of Ohio voted against it. So this guy, Joshua Giddings, he was part of a small group of congressmen that were strongly against slavery. So they were anti-slavery. They were ab actually abolitionists. And they knew that the war was just an excuse to add more land that would be made into slave states. And so thousands, along with those um, that small group, 
of congressmen, thousands of working class people as well also refused to support the war because they saw that they would be sacrificing their lives to just make slave owners richer. So they didn't want to go to war just to make a bunch of rich slave owners even more rich. So, you know, the elites got their way and the invasion of Mexico was swift, but deadly. Um, so General Zachary Taylor and his army, this guy to the left, marched south into Mexico. But as they went south, the men became more and more difficult to control. So the soldiers became more and more difficult to control and this resulted in the deaths of innocent civilians, destroying villages, and eventually the issue of desertion. So many U.S. soldiers decided to leave. So after months of fighting and seeing untold amounts of violence and death, the soldiers grew tired of fighting. They were sick and tired of it. So after less than a year of fighting, over 1,000 soldiers left. And over the course of the war, over 9,000 soldiers deserted or just dropped their weapons and went home. So the men grew tired of being forced to fight in such horrible conditions while their generals and the politicians just got to sit back and get rich. So they were like, we're sitting here fighting against, you know, a people that we don't even have anything against, really, just to make a bunch of rich people more rich. So after less than two years of fighting, Mexico officially surrendered in 1848. So this was known as the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, and it officially ended the war with Mexico, but Mexico had to pay a huge price. So the U.S. took the entire Southwest and California while also setting the border between the two countries at the Rio Grande River. The U.S. agreed to pay Mexico $15 million in return. And so this allowed people to say that we, you know, air quote, bought the new territories, instead of actually taking it through a bloody war. And so one newspaper summed it up, summed up this whole lie, stating that we take nothing by conquest, thank God. Hint, hint, that might be an important quote going forward. Um, and so this would only serve as the beginning of the bloody expansion of what became the United States empire, that we'll see is a giant empire today. And so... Um, before, this is actually all of the lecture, but before I finish, make sure to take note of this political cartoon and what you think that this political cartoon could stand for. Hypothetically speaking, it could really behoove you to do that for our next test. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions.